Well, I'm out today on the GSXR. I've just done the brake overhaul. New Brembo calipers. Massive thanks to Tim, who saw my post on Instagram saying, you know, about my when I bought the master cylinder, he said, well, by the way, I've got some GSXR calipers off my 2020 if you want them for a good price. I was like, Tim, yeah, how much do you want? 200 quid, he says. I said, Tim, I'm going to snap your hand off. <laughs> so I bought so I bought them off in 200 quid, a set of 2020 Brembo calipers and then the rcs master cylinder new lines new motor master discs so the whole front end has been replaced if it's, if this video looks a little bit different and sounds a little bit different i'm also testing the insta 360 uh, one rs camera so this is the 360 camera but can also do a 4k module with external audio so i'm testing out this as part of this little ride this ride really is to test the camera and see how it compares to the gopro to include as part of my review when i review this uh, this camera so join me and keep me company while i bed in my brake discs and we talk a little bit about the brake setup and what i've got coming up and all sorts of other stuff drop c roll the intro at this it's like a work of art you can also this is the 1921 i think it is or oh, it's an rcs 19 but you can adjust it between a 19 and a 20 position like they have on the triumphs you know like on the uh, street rs and the speed rs you can adjust a little screw there and, and change the capacity of the lever so that is all the movement i've got you know and that is <laughs> so much feel in that little bit of movement Let's bring this in a bit. We don't need it right out there with this. It's got so much. Yeah, let's try about there. See how hot things are running. Obviously, it'll run a bit hotter as things are just bedding together. It's going to generate a bit more heat. It's quite hot with this to the touch. While well, things bed together, a bit of additional heat generated. You're being watched. Yep, hope so. That's the whole point. Oh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It is the uh, Jubilee Bank Holiday today. It's the Thursday of the Jubilee Bank Holiday. For those outside of the UK, because of the Queen's Jubilee, where she's been Queen for, is it 70 years? Or is it 50 years? <laughs> I'm not much of a royalist, but I'm very thankful for the extra bank holidays. So it's, uh, it's bank holiday today. Should be a word, but we've got an extra day off. It's all, it is actually the normal bank holiday, but we've got an extra day and we've got a four day weekend. So it's meant to be crap weather Saturday, Sunday, possibly, but it's gorgeous today. So I sneaked out for between my tea, cake and street parties, just for a little bit of a spin on the GSXR to test out these new brakes. And my goodness, they are wonderful. Because I, mean, I don't know why Suzuki just don't put a Brembo master cylinder on their bikes. When they fitted the Brembos to the bike to improve the braking, just, just leave the old calipers on. Just spend the extra money on the master cylinder. That's where it was suffering. But uh, now the feel was beautiful. So I'm at Cadwell Park next week on this for Suzuki Live. And I can't wait to get it on track with nice brakes. Ooh, I can't wait. We don't want that E10 shit. I think the E10's all right if you uh, don't leave it in your bike. If you, if you use a lot of fuel and you get through a lot of fuel, actually the E10's okay. It's if it's stored and left in the bike is the issue. You know, so don't fill up with that and then put your bike away for a month because uh, that's when you've got a problem. Right. However, we will, of course, go for the Supreme. 186. Is it ever going to stop increasing the price of fuel? Yeah, looking forward to getting this on track. Um, Cadwell. I mean, I've got the quick shifter. I've got all the other stuff as well to fit to it. And the power commander, the link pipe. But I don't want to do too much to it. And then bugger it, you know, if something goes wrong and it's not going to be ready for Cadwell. How's it all looking? Not leaking, not dripping anywhere. 
but look at these beauties oh <laughs> that's, that's a brake system that's it that's fine brilliant thank you very much what we've got to do is just do a few miles to, to bed the discs because i've had to change the pads again because you know the brembo calipers are different pads to what was in the choco calipers over the old ones were called i need another set of new pads so thanks to daniel at dr bikes for sort of advising me on the best brake pads to go for um is the sbs fully sintered ones gives you a bit more bite i like a lot of bite on my brakes and that's what it gives you because the brake lines obviously were for the old caliper setup and these calipers, where, where you attach the banjos and the lines, are further up the caliper. So it's about two inches further up the caliper. So my lines are two inches too long. So it was a bit of a pig to try and root everything. Um, and the lines, you know, they're not perfect. They're a bit squiffy now. And there's a bit of tension in there where it doesn't want to be tension. And, but um, I'm not replacing the lines. It's just going to have to do. When I take the wheel out, it's going to be a bit of a pain, actually because it's so tight when you I forgot to take the caliper off with the lines attached it's going to be awkward but it is what it is i'm not messing with it again once i've done cadwell i will do the full in you know, the next video the next garage video on this bike installing the quick shifter the power commander the link pipe oh, what else have i got the heel tech bits and pieces you know the torque eliminator i've also got myself thanks daniel again at dr bikes a quick action throttle so i think it's the pro motion quick action throttle which he advised is like the best one on the market so i've got a quick action throttle to go on so i've got a lot of stuff to fit to this you know so um yeah those garage videos will be coming again very soon i've not ridden this for a little while because it's taken me like six weeks of guffage with the brakes you know to get them sorted so I've not ridden it for about six weeks and to jump back on it again now it's just such a lovely comfortable bike I was actually really tempted by the uh, the Street Fighter the V2 Street Fighter I reviewed I don't know if that review's gone up yet but I, I, I don't know I've sung about that I really like the look of the Street Fighter probably more so than the Super Duke even though I think the Super Duke is probably a better bike at the end of the day I think the Street Fighter just looks a bit better, you know, it makes its power a bit differently and I really like, I really enjoyed it. So I'm sort of thinking about, oh, should I get a I could sell the H2, get a Street Fighter, but I don't think so. I think when I get back on this bike again, this just feels so nice, pretty comfortable. I mean, the bars are pretty high, it's, it's, a, it's a comfortable sports bike, this. It's so smooth, it's so lovely. And I just think, no, this, this bike is brilliant. I can actually see me keeping this, just being a keeper, you know, because they just don't like, they just don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> I know that's a saying, but it's true. They literally just don't make them like this anymore. So what else have I got going on? What's coming up on the channel in the next couple of months? Well, not a lot, really. I, I don't sort of plan too far ahead. <laughs> that probably shows with my content I can't go and do tour I'd love to go into Europe and do a trip I can't my, my Mrs Chop suffers from crippling anxiety and it's for the last few years even slightly before Covid but after Covid it's been really really bad and uh, I can't leave her overnight you know even when I go on a launch or to Cadwell she comes along and we get an Airbnb you know, I, I can't, when I'm not around, she really suffers. And uh, my son, Chops Junior, he's in Australia at the moment. He's on like a backpacking holiday in Australia. He's been in Australia about two and a half months, the lucky bugger. But he's coming back in a couple of weeks. When he's back, it'll, you know, it'll give me a bit more flexibility to sort of leave Mrs. Chops. So that, that's why I struggle to do a lot of launches. You know, I get invited to a few launches, not that many, but a few. But if it involves going away overnight, it's really difficult for me to uh, to do it. So yeah, someone else on YouTube with mental well, mental health issues. You know, I don't personally have them, but I'm dealing with them with Mrs. Chops. You know, so that's why I don't do. You know, I can't just go off and 
go to Europe and you know just do some I'd love to do that I'd, I'm itching to go and do some sort of European trip but not at the minute hopefully she'll be well enough soon for me to do that I know Chris you know from 44 Teeth has spoken out about sort of mental health and he suffers with depression and mental health and all that so and I'm not I'm not jumping on the bandwagon it's something I haven't mentioned before but you know it's you know it affects a lot of people it affects a lot of people and may, you may not personally suffer but you know like me I, you know I've got but the what the, the missus really suffers so you know it's not just the people who is directly affecting obviously they're suffering but it's you know it's the family the friends of the people and you've got to be there to support them so uh, yeah it's it's uh, you know and I think what since covid and lockdown you know people's anxiety is is heightened you know people weren't aren't used to going out I know it's getting better all the time but there'd be a lot of people who now since lockdown are, are, you know feel like they can't leave their homes you know it is it's a problem I, th I think you know in some respect a lockdown is is going to cause more long-term issues and actually covid and getting ill itself motorcycling is sort of like a bit of a release for me you know it's a, it's a way of switching off from that you know your problems this is how i deal with with stress i guess out riding bikes you know this is my de-stress and i think if i didn't have biking you know i i could be suffering as well but i really find just getting out and riding you know with friends it's also a big social thing to it but even just getting out on your own you know it's it's a great way to de-stress and certainly for me being a carer you know i'm a carer <laughs> also my daughter is also on the antidepressants as well so really not doing very well in our family what with the missus and the daughter but you know you do what you can to support them and, and that and that's the way it is but anyway Let's speak about more uplifting things. Oh, the brakes are so good. You can't, you can't beat nice feeling brakes and transforming the feel of your bike. You can't beat that lovely feel of new brakes. Absolutely lovely. Or well, decent brakes, you know. Brakes which give you the feel and feedback. And also with this bike being you know being a 2008 it has no abs so you want a lot of feel from your brakes so you know what you're doing with them you know you're not going to be locking it up so i think it's even more important on, the, on an older bike you know a pre-abs bike like this manufacturers would go back and produce bikes like this again bikes which aren't sports bikes which aren't just about lap times aren't just about track track days because sports bikes do work on the road if they're designed properly you know if you've got reasonably high bars if you've got pegs which aren't cripplingly high you have this thing here called a fairing and a screen and that's amazing when you're on the motorway or you're going at speed you know and the fairing on this is better than adventure bike screens you know you, people don't realize and you can sit on the motorway at high speed you know in comfort if that's the beauty of sports bikes if they just made them a little bit more comfortable they could you know they could rejuvenate the whole sports bike market again i'm sure they could but the whole market's just been so obsessed with which one's quickest round the track you know I don't care I want a comfortable street bike the BMW S1000 RR and the GSX-R are not too bad but they could be better this thing is just so nice on the road and also I've mentioned it before in some of my reviews because you have got a bit of weight on your wrists You've got less on your ass so you don't suffer with a sore bum on a sports bike like you do on adventure bikes and, and and naked and any other bike really because you've got weight you're sharing your load between your your arms and your backside 
your backside doesn't get sore. So, you know, like I say, I did that big hunt with Bruce all the way, 600 miles, 620 miles, I think I did that day, on the s 1000 rr and my bum was fine. It was fine. If I'd done that on an adventure bike, I would have been in agony. Well, on the, let's say the Ducati, the, the Multistrada, the new Multistrada, I would have been in agony after sort of three hours, my ass would have gone all day on that bike from five in the morning until 11 at night after I did that with the odd break to get off and shove pasties down the mouth bloody brilliant these bikes are going to start I think to go up in value these mid to late 2000 bikes or even early 2000s because they're pretty good they're not that different from the modern stuff and when it's all said and done and what I'll do, once I've done the quick shift, once I've done all the upgrades on this, I'll borrow the latest GSX-R and we'll compare it to the latest one. And we'll see how different it is. And I think, you know, these older bikes are going to start going up in value. Good, good, good examples, you know. Because you haven't got all the gizmos, all the gubbins, you know, they're, they're, they're analogue, they're raw. I'm not going to say you don't need those things because you know some people may want those things but for me I like the raw experience of this bike I mean modern electronics are fantastic on bikes these days there's no denying you know in the last three years last two years especially they're at a level now where you know they're not intrusive at all you really don't know they're doing much but you still got all the modes you know this mode, that mode, am I in the right mode for this bit of road, you know, should, I, should I change to the comfort mode, <laughs> just ride the bike, don't worry about that, things are much simpler back then, anyway there you go, thanks for coming along while I bed my brakes in and listen to me talk utter nonsense, <laughs> see you in the next video guys.